Hey guys, been a long time since I've seen you guys. Um, so I wanted to include you in on this because um, it seems like uh, do it uh, yourself videos and you know repairing stuff. That stuff gets the most views. But um, we are renovating. We are going to paint cabinets, and I'm already starting to tape them off and we are going to prime them. Um, I could brush and roll these things and you can do it. I, uh, I could, I debated whether I was gonna brush and roll them or not. Um, but um, I figured, you know what, if I tape all this stuff off and spray them out, I'll probably get, it'd probably be a wash, it'll be a better finish, but this is definitely doable with a brush and roller. Now, these cabinets are a lot easier to spray if you have a sprayer and guess what i got a sprayer because i paint for a living so you're going to get a professional way to do this what products i'm going to use how am i going to do this so uh hopefully we picked out some nice colors and you guys would be impressed i hope i am and we're gonna be doing the walls too and as you can see i'm already starting to do the taping off I'll show you a few pointers and stuff and how to tape them off and how to label your doors and uh, how I do it. Um, uh, anybody else could probably do this too and probably the best primer you want to use and uh, a finish that I'm going to use in here. So, and why I do things and why I'm not going to do things. Okay, so uh, let's get to uh, taping these things off. There's a hand masker. Every painter's got one of these. Car, de car painters, whatever. About 50 bucks. 3M makes them. 12 inch paper, one inch tape. Some painters use a lot of one half inch tape. I like one inch tape. Less expensive, I can, I can, I can manage it pretty well. I was thinking, man, there is a lot of taping off. Um, I'm not sure how long it's been since the last time I recorded, but there's a lot of taping off. But um, I was thinking, like I said, brush it and roll it. I could have brushed all this out with the primer and then br and painted it, this and stuff, but this might be a little too much. So, okay, I'm gonna continue taking stuff off. Uh, I, took an, I took these off. And oh, another thing. Uh, make sure when you take stuff off, I've got all the screws and stuff and I got them taped on here. Like, like, uh, this, this little cap goes here. I left the screws in it if I could. Um, I found that out and like all the, the hardware that was in here, like the hanger, coat hangers, I put them close by here. And then I'll show you what to do with the, all the hardware and all the hinges. I have a little special deal that, uh, it's never failed me. So I'll show you that. So I'm going to continue on and give you an update later. Okay, here's what I do with the hinges. Uh, I keep them in spots that they were came from because sometimes uh, mechanical hinges are adjusted perfectly. These aren't. These are just regular hinges, but sometimes they get tweaked in certain ways after a while. So I like to keep them in the same place they were. So I'll mark this one left, middle, right. I'll put an R. M left and I'll put a little piece of tape on them with the screws and everything and then I'll put them just inside here just inside here same with these I'll wrap some tape around here after I take these two out right here and this one with some tape and I'll mark it uh, left and I'll put it just right inside here it shouldn't go anywhere it's not going anywhere because I'm putting tape here I'll show you how I, I do that too I'm putting tape here because I 
don't want to spray inside the box. I don't want to deal with that. Nobody's paying me to do that. Anyways, no big deal. So, uh, yeah. So that's what I do with the hinges to make sure. Now, if it was a one that had a, a top, a top and a bottom, it'd be T and a B, and I just put them inside there, on this side. And then if there was a top and bottom hinge here, they'd go right inside, and then the top. So I know the top and the bottom hinge goes there. So I'll do that on all the cabinets. I'll put the tape, you know, and I'll just put them all in here, and I'll just put them right inside and instead of throwing them in a big bucket, because it, it, it's a mess, and yeah. So that's that's what I do. All right, now that I've got the goodies in here, <laughs> the goodies, the hinges in there that are marked, I, I looked at the, some of the screws, they all look the same, so, except the hinges and those are different color. Anyway, so I marked them, put them in there. Like I said, they're not going anywhere. Well, I can't do that. And then, another thing is, we want to mark each one. So I'm gonna start with this one. One, two, three, four, and this will be five, six, seven, eight. So what I'll do is I'll come here and I'll mark number eight. I see a lot of people, they'll take a piece of tape and they'll put number eight on the tape and just tape it right here. It's like, why do that? You have to take the tape off when you paint it. So now what you do is you take a piece of tape, okay, and you put it right over the top of the eight. See now this is where the hinge goes. So when you take the tape off, it will be unpainted, but that's okay because that's where the hinge goes. So you put your, you know, your hinge there and you have your, your number and then you take, um, let me see your right, I'll have to write on here, number eight. Number eight, I'm gonna take this off. And I'll put it right in there, number eight. So I know eight goes there. And here I've got masking tape. In. This is the sticky side, so I just put it in the inside here. It's two inch tape. Just put it in the inside. Then I'm gonna stick a piece of paper here and tape that off. All right, let's see here. Just enough. short maybe not then I'll put my hand back here so I have a backing a little short there but okay a little backing here put my hand in here put it back in here pull it out kind of touch here feels like it's and if it feels like it's gonna go through just go like this just like that oh, a little hole there Boom. See how fast that was. Ugh, a lot of stuff to spray, like I said. I didn't know if I wanted to spray it or if I wanted to brush and roll it. Uh, either way. I'll just be in the paint less, you know, actually applying the paint less if I was to spray it. A little bit more materials, a little bit more like oh my gosh I'm never gonna get it done and you know me being a professional I can tape this off pretty fast so I mean I advise you guys if you're doing this it's okay to brush and roll it it really is it's just that I see that it's gonna be a lot faster for me to be in and out of the paint I can be in the primer and in the paint probably do it same day whereas if I was to brush and roll this I'd have to brush and roll this and brush it yeah be a little bit longer but um so that's the way I'm attacking it and there are some spots that I'll brush and roll that I'll show you um, my way of doing it and the materials I use that, that will help you okay so onward I got so we're gonna paint down here I'm gonna roll the top I'll show you guys how to roll and everything that uh, I've got all this masked off uh, I'm not masking the walls off because I'm gonna be painting those I've got the ceiling masked off I decided to leave the valances up. This is, oh, there was a lot of work here. A lot of taping off. I had to tape the floor off that I just did. Uh, bathrooms all taped off. Wherever I think I'm going to be pointing the sprayer, you've got paint or tape and paper. And um, don't need to do any taping off in here because 
there's nothing really in there. I'm not really worried about the rollers. Um, refrigerator's all masked off. The whole ceiling's done where I think I'm going to be getting overspray. Um, oven. Microwave. Uh, I might put some paper. I don't know, depending on what the weather's like tomorrow. Got all this masked off. Got all my doors here. I'm going to take those out and spray those. Um, got a drop cloth up here. Some windows taped off. So next time you'll see, we'll be getting some primer on these uh, drawers and doors here. Be doing some sanding and, and whatnot. So, okay, well... That's the plan. I'll call it a day, man. Oh, quite a bit. All right. See you in the morning. Okay. Good morning, guys. Uh, day three, I think. Um, took me two days to tape the inside off over there. So now we're going to do, start doing some priming and stuff. And um, here's what we're going to use. We're going to use the bin primer. Wow, is that backwards? Yeah, because uh, selfie. Anyways, uh, you can get this at Home Depot. It's about $44. It's a shellac. Now, you can use um, uh, Kills oil base if you can still get it. This is California, so I, I'm limited. The shellac I found is very, very, very sticks really good. Um, but if you do some priming cabinets, don't use the water-based primer, please. I mean, you can, but I wouldn't. I use water-based primer on stuff, but not inside cabinets. It just scratches off too easy. This stuff will stick. This stuff sticks really, really, really good. Um, as, as, as it says in the spec sheets for this stuff, it says something the painter, every painter has in their truck. And sure enough, I do. Okay. You also, uh, it says to cut it with uh, alcohol or ammonia water. I use ammonia water. Um, a lot of times you see stuff says clean up with soap and water and you just, oh yeah, just water's fine. I always thought that for brush and stuff, I still do. I made the mistake of using the stuff for the first time and oh, I don't need ammonia, ammonia and water, that means just that means just water. So I ended up running water through my rig and it gummed it up. So make sure you use this 50-50, one part ammonia, one part water. You can go with more water if you want. So what I do is I have, and this is for spraying it, but you can still cut it with brush and roller with this. You can even use straight ammonia, as long as it's both water. Well, you can just use straight ammonia. Anyways. I have a bucket here full of water and ammonia. And what I'll do is, I think that's squirrels, that's squirrels over there. Uh, I'll run uh, a bucket with this through my sprayer first because there are remnants in the hose of water from the last time I used some water-based paint, usually what I always use. And um, so if I start running the product through with water in my lines, it's gonna gum up. So. I like to run this through, just a rinse cycle. That way it gets the uh, ammonia coated in the lines and that way I don't get um, get it gummed up. So I'm gonna go, do, go ahead and do that. And then uh, we're gonna get spraying. The doors, not the inside, but we'll do the doors first and uh, I'll show you how I do it. All right, you can rent these at Home Depot, these sprayers and uh, I don't know, it's 50, 60 dollars a day, I'm not sure. You might need it for a couple couple days. Okay, I got my spray area. I've got my door. And I like to clean. I like to clean them with this stuff. That way it gets all the grease and stuff off of here. So I'll do both front and back, wipe it off, and then uh I'll grab a putty knife. That way I can kind of wipe it down with a rag and I'll be touching every spot of it so I'll know if there's any um, any small defects and I can usually scrape them off. Like sometimes there's a little felt pads and stuff like that and get them off then. I'll do both sides, clean both sides. And then I'll grab a sanding sponge. This is 120. 
might be a little rough, but um, I haven't really decided which one I want to do. So I'll sand them both, uh, both sides, so it'll be ready. I'll only spray one side, and then I'll wipe it with a, a cloth to get all the dust off. And then I'll, I'll blow it all off, and I'll lay it out there. And I've got red rosalind paper because I found that depending on the finish, it'll sometimes it sticks. The stuff that I'm gonna be using does not stick. But with red rosalind paper, it comes off real easy with a wet rag. So I'll lay them all out in here. And uh, this stuff dries super quick. So you give that 15 minutes and you can sand it. So that way I can get the front fronts and backs done today. I can get inside the motor home done today. And then hopefully I can get to the, um, to the dark color because we're doing dark color on the bottom, like the galley area. Okay, I didn't show you with these, but use a hand masker and you mask around here and then I'll sit it down like this and I'll spray the edge there then I'll flip it up like this and I'll spray the top and that's it I, I don't have to flip it over and spray it later I got both the, the backs and the fronts because I can set it up like this in the garage so that's how I do the drawers okay got all the backs painted time to put a first coat in on the on the RV and move the sprayer over there and go inside. Okay. Here it goes. Um, that. Okay. doesn't come down very far. What's nice about this stuff, it is so thin, so thin that uh, when you sand it, it uh, doesn't leave a 
or what they call fat lip. That's what I call it. They're a little tough. Spring this stuff's a little tough. All right, I'm gonna log out of here so I can focus. Okay, I got all the primer on. This is not easy. This is not easy. You get runs real easy. Maybe with an HVLP gun, might be a little bit better. You can control it a little bit better. But I'm putting out a lot of paint, so you gotta be fast and gotta keep your hand moving. You can't ever let that spray stop, otherwise it'll, you'll make a puddle. I'm gonna roll the top of that, like I said. So there's all the primer. I'm gonna go pray. I'm gonna go paint the uh, insides of the uh, or the outsides, the faces of the other all the cabinets here in the garage. So I'm gonna go do that now, and then come back in here and check, check it out, see if there's anything else that I missed. Okay. Okay, I went to the paint store, got my paint. Um, let me show you what I got here. Okay, I, uh, I like for my cabinets. I use Sherwin's Pro Classic. Um, it's a non-blocking paint. In other words, um, I know with water-based paints, a lot of the paints that I use over many years, um, they're very uh, tacky very kind of rubbery feeling when you when they dry this stuff you touch it after it dries and it's and it doesn't stick you can shut it on itself like doors and it doesn't stick where with some of the other stuff um, it sticks well that only comes in a white base so the top cabinets is getting like a light light gray and then um, that only comes in a white base I think or a medium base and the bottoms are going to go with a darker color like really dark dark blue and so since that doesn't come in in the base i'm going to use their emerald this stuff's expensive but it's also a um i don't know if it's also a urethane but um it's also like that it, it's non-blocking it it's dries so it's not sticky and so this is emerald urethane and I don't think this is a urethane. I'm not sure. It's just an acrylic latex. But um, so those are the two I'm going to be using. And um, I'm not sure what the retail is on the Emerald. I think it's like 100 bucks. I don't pay that. But that's 100 bucks. And the Pro Classic, I think, retail on that's like 65 70 or something. Um, All right, I'll give you guys a little peek. A little peeky peeky. Got the bottom parts done. And then tomorrow, uh oh, smack my foot on there. And tomorrow, we are going to do the top. So I'll put some plastic off, I'll plastic these off, put a, I'll just drape some plastic down, and we'll do the tops. All right, let me go ahead and show you. I'm not going to roll that back there yet, but I want to show you there's a couple spots I missed under here. So I just brushed that on. And this stuff's almost like water. Very thin. So let me show you about, I mean, I don't need to do this, but. See? Good morning, guys. Um. Time to do the fronts and backs of these of the light gray. I want to show you something before I forget. Okay. Now. Oh, I gotta flip this around. Okay. Uh, when I spray the backs, I lay them on something so you, know, you have a little bit. Now when I do the fronts, I don't want the overspray to wrap around so I take these off. Then I lay the door like this. That way the overspray can't get wrap around. And then after each door, I'll put down a new piece of 
Roslyn paper. And that's how I get the fronts done without the overspray wrapping around. Okay. Um, so I got overspray over here, so I sand it off and everything because it didn't. The finish doesn't stick very well to this stuff. I use a primer. So I'm gonna use this primer. And there's a couple areas, of course, that I didn't spray. So we're gonna go ahead and and uh, do this. Okay. This stuff is pretty thin. And this is a latex brush, a pretty latex brush, water-based brush. Oil-based brushes don't work very well. They start to fray out. So you wanna use a water-based brush. And, oh, of course I've got, I'm watching what I'm doing instead of watching how I'm filming. Real thin, and it dries really, really fast. Look how far it goes. You just, you're just putting on there for a bonding agent. You're not trying to, you know, get it to uh, cover at all. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. Get this all primed out. Okay, did it all with a brush. That'll be ready to walk on in no time. Yeah, I got this all done. Okay, now I'm gonna throw this in a uh, bucket. I have a bucket with ammonia and water that I still have. I just let it soak in there. And when I'm ready to use it, just shake it out and use it again. That's what I'll do. Parker out here playing with the kids. So what I'll do is I'll just throw it in my bucket full of it in there. And now we're gonna go back and do some uh, demasking, I think. Because everything looks pretty dry. So we can get on it. Okay, here I am to roll this out see this little setup I got this is what you want to do you don't want to get the little flat pan you want to get a little they call these deuce buckets and this is a weenie roller little quarter inch nap and then a grate fits in there don't ever buy the pans I think it's a joke for all the homeowners who don't know what they're doing it really is so I'm gonna I got everything all done except this I did I did this last because I was gonna be stepping on it so I'm gonna roll this, oops, kind of smacked the hinge pretty good. So we're gonna do this, probably put a couple coats on. <clears throat> okay, we've got the gray going on here. And again, use a small roller. You could probably get a bigger nap, but I'm gonna use a, a little quarter inch nap here. off kind of oh boy it's gonna be inviting hopefully
this bathroom done. Bruh. So cramped in here. All right, I'm all done, all done. We are gonna go and check out the reveal. Ready? Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Got the got a backsplash up there. It's contact paper. Nice. Uh, got the walls done. All the walls done in here. Now the these are getting reposted. So give me a break on that. Got all the paint up into there. All brush and rolled. That's all brush and rolled. Brush and rolled. These are all sprayed. You know. Ooh, it's not very good. Not wide lens. These are all sprayed out. Nice shiny. Those are all done. My wife's got a uh, a wood, some of this wood backsplash up against. So I think we're gonna do something like that here in the back. Get rid of this uh, pattern here. She doesn't like it. All the walls are all done. This is all done. All the walls in here. Get a little, did a little number in the bathroom here. There you go. Brush and rolled. Oh, well, I missed. I lost these like little, little camber things that go in there, and I I don't know where they went. I remember saying I better put these right here so I don't lose them, and I lost them. So here you go. So that's uh, that's the painting. So we're gonna end this video. And uh, next thing will be a reveal of the, or show you what we're gonna do with the, all the couches and stuff and all the fabrics. And what we're gonna do, like with this stuff up here, what we're gonna do and in the back. But um, all these cabinets, you can just brush and roll them. I showed you how to do it. What products to use. Um, so that's, uh, that's where we're gonna end this and uh, Hopefully this stuff will stick really good. Well, I'll let you know in the future. And, I, and then again, I'll talk about the floor later too, about what the problems I had with the floor. Anyways, again, I'm going to end this video and uh, we'll see you on the next video. And uh, it'll probably, I don't know if it'll be the fabric video or a vacation video. I don't know. But um, I'm still out here and man, this was a lot of work. A lot of work. Spring is just a lot of work. Okay, I go on and on and on story time all day long, but uh, I'm going to end this here, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video, and uh, thanks for watching.